What's the haps, folks? This is Professor App here with a let's play of Pentiment. Last time we continued our life in Europe, and I finally got a chance to speak to the Archdeacon. Yes, yeah, so um, I, after giving, I started, after spending time with the uh, the spinning bee with the women in the in the village of Tassing, I the time finally came where I had to go and uh, give my evidence towards the Archdeacon as to what I thought about the Baron's murder. And during that time, I uh, decided to indict a prior Ferenc as being the person who would who could have possibly uh, killed the Baron. I also get told a bit about Atelia Kemperin's situation, and hopefully now that maybe he's that sorted her out and that she's maybe managed to keep her property and not have it being stolen away by uh, by her father Gurnot. And um, as a result of my uh, actions, it turned out that uh, the Archdeacon listened to me, and he decided to, that uh, prior Ferenc was responsible, and he ended up executing him in public. Which was a uh, very brutal. I think the executioner took like three swings at his head before it actually came off, which was a uh, not a pleasant thing to look at. Um, one thing I did find out as well is that um, going back over it, it turns out that uh, no matter what I did, Piero would have always been found innocent. So that would have always been the case that Piero would have gotten away with it, you know, gotten a, uh, let free. All that really matters with that ch decision there is uh, who I would have chosen to indict as the person who actually did kill the Baron. So I could have again, I, I could have like chosen to indict Ottilia or maybe even Martin as well. I'm not entirely sure how that would have worked, given that Martin's presence is unknown at the moment. I don't know what we don't know what he's up to. I'm guessing that uh, based on your decision there as who you choose to indict for the murder, that then has an impact later on down the line as to what will happen and like who which carrots will be friendly with you and which ones won't be. So for example, because I chose Prior Ferenc, it seems like uh, Father Gunnar is not is not going to be happy with me at all. He actually told me that I'm banished from uh, from tasking from now on. But uh, as it turns out, um, actually before this, uh, I said goodbye to Piero after giving you know, after he gave me all the help and approved my painting, and so I left uh, tasking for good to go back to Nuremberg. And now it's jumped seven years into the future, where unfortunately a brother Piero has passed away, and Andreas has come here to pay pay his respects along with his with his apprentice Casper. Yes, he's got like a like a young boy with him who's become uh, his apprentice. He's also learning his uh, learn how learning how to paint with and from Andreas. And now we're currently in town, back in uh, back in Tassing after all this time. And I think uh, Andreas said he's going to go and to visit um, visit Klaus soon, yeah, who's not seen in a long time. Yeah, so I, I didn't expect there to be a, like a time skip like this. And I've, I've jumped forward seven years into the future. I mean, and also, I'm guessing that I may have actually indicted the wrong person, but I'm not entirely sure whether you know, Prior Ferenc actually did the murder, because we still haven't resolved the issue with the, the person writing the letters. You know, and there's this mastermind who, like, lured them to the, uh, lured them to the, the, uh, the, chap the chapter house to commit the murder. Also, just notice that uh, there are, like, two letters in that same coloured ink on the right, aren't there? It's like, listen, in that ink that, uh, that they use to, like, send the letters out to people to, to kill the Baron. And also, Andreas got one saying, "Do not come back here," which he got when he first left uh, when he first left uh, the Abbey seven years ago. And I'm, I'm guessing that uh, what's going to happen now is something will happen. I mean, given the title's called Revolution, I'm guessing that something really big is going to happen in Tassing now. But I hope that's something we'll look forward to in a minute. So why don't we get started and see what we've got in store for us? Yeah, so here we are back in Tassing, and it's uh, chucking it down outside, and this is uh, my apprentice, Casper. Uh, I don't want to go to bed just yet. And as you can see, Andreas has uh, grown quite a bit of facial hair in his, uh, in his time uh, as his uh, as work as an artist. Let's see what we've got here. This room is sparse compared to what I'm used to. I guess he's used to you know, the, fi the finest hotels in, in Europe, is he? Let's go to the Golden Hands, then. I don't think I've ever been to the Golden Hand. Maybe did it actually exist when I was here for the last time? It's Hannah. Hello, Andreas. How are you enjoying your stay? It's been wonderful, Hannah. Thank you. Oh, good. You're in the best room we have. I'm glad it's your liking. <laughs> if only if I don't have told her what he really thought. Was there anything else? No, thank you. Until later. Until then. Anyone else around here? Nope, doesn't look like it. Let's head down. There's the meadow. I wonder if I've still got my map and if I've got the, uh, anything in my uh, journal. 
Oh, that's the other. That's the other thing. Is it the? Uh, oh, that's the gold. The, the inn is it? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot's changed in the in the seven years since I was away. I suppose. Ah, oh, these are all the people I've just met here. Okay, so these are. I'm guessing there are. I'm guessing some of these are people I haven't met before, actually, because you know, lots changed in this time. Okay, so paying respects. It feels strange being back in Kiersau, back in Tassing. I haven't talked to anyone here in years. I should stop by Klaus's house to see how he's been. I've got new information about my past. Yeah, he's looking very dapper now. Yeah, Andreas, yeah, it's about Andreas knowing some English, because I said I, was, I studied in London, I think, and worked for a bit in London. Killian, is that her son? Good day, Master Maylet. Doesn't look like a good day, sounds like he's pouring it down. This is Nico. Ah, Master Mailer, is it? Hello and welcome to the Golden Hand. I am Nico Berger. I own this land house and run it with my wife Hannah and our son Killian. I believe my boy helped you to your room. Is it to your liking? It's lovely, thank you. I'm glad to hear it, glad to hear it. When you arrived in town, one of the, one of the locals said you lived here a few years back. Yes, yeah, so he's, uh, he's someone I haven't met before, are you? Yes, I worked for the Abbey as an artist. Ah, I see. I heard that you were involved in solving a murder. Yes, out of necessity. The wrong man was being accused of the crime, a friend of mine. I heard it was the prior at the Abbey, that the Baron was a sacrifice in some diabolical spell the brother was casting. I don't think it was quite like that, I think he was, he was being black, uh, apparently he was being blackmailed. Uh, let's see, alright. I just find it to be an interesting story. Ah, well, I shall let you get, your, get, you get to your day. Until later. Until then. Oh, who's this here? This is Samuel. Hello, Andre. Hello, Andreas. Hmm, don't remember him either. Guess I can just just go out then to the meadow. That's the only way I can go, is it? Oh, is that Otto there? Yeah, it looks like Otto. Brother Washlav uses time in almost all of the Abbey's cooking. Maybe because he grow he grows so easily here. And there's Otto. Is that Martin with him? Just do it. You know you know it's the right thing. I don't understand why this is so hard for you. Otto, I'm scared. It's dangerous to cross the Abbot. Would you prefer the alternative? You don't need to do that, Otto. I understand. I'm just saying. Andreas? Andreas Mailer? It's good to see you again, old friend. Otto, you're looking well. This is my apprentice, Kaspar Ziegler, from Salzburg. Salzburg. A small city located on the river Sol Solzach and founded on Roman ruins. Rumours of violence and rebellion in the city are becoming more common. Kaspar's hometown. Good day. Ah, that answers that. I thought he might be your son. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, so, so, I was going to say, he's a bit too old to be my son. I've only been married seven years, Otto. Oh, good point. <laughs> How old are you, then? Fourteen, sir. Shit, I never would have known. Easy living will, easy living will do that, I guess. Even I, Eva and I just had our first. Little Otto, although we call him Ots. Oh, so he did end up marrying Eva then. That's his son Otto. He's got th three generations of Otto then. Old Otto, Lit Otto, and then Ots. Congratulations to you both. That's wonderful news. Thank you. It's been a trial with Dad gone, but Clara and Ursula help out where they can. Oh, Ursula's grown up a bit, has not she? She was only she was, what, like two or three last time. I'm sorry to hear about your father. That's life. At least he's with the Lord now, free of his aches and pains. I know Eva wrote to you about my father's death, Andreas. 
Why didn't you write back? I'm sorry, I just... Things got busy after I left Tassing. Ah, sorry to interrupt, but I should be heading back. Yeah, is that not, is that not Martin? It looks like Martin. Otto, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Of course, sir. Thought so, yeah. This is Martin, of course. Martin Bauer, can't you tell? Oh, it's fine, Otto. It's been seven years and I was so much smaller then. Also, no beard. Ha! <laughs> You've grown? It's been known to happen with children. Ha! <laughs> As much as I love whiling away the hours in the meadow, I have a lot to attend to. Otto, I'll see you at the meeting later. Andreas, until later. Until then. Oh, missed something there. Pain in my arse. Is something happening in town? We've picked an interesting time to visit. Come by the town commons in a while. I think you'll be interested to hear what I have to say. I didn't realise you were in the business of giving speeches. I'll definitely attend. Sounds good. Until later then. Old faces. Okay, let me have a look at that. I ran into Otto Zimmerman and Martin Bauer having a discussion in the meadow. Martin returned from his adventures as a changed man. Otto told me to come to the commons later. I'll head there after I talk to Klaus. Oh, yeah, this this uh, this building didn't exist here before. You know, this, this inn didn't exist. Here, so, yeah, I guess they must have built it in the time I was away. Hmm. What was a cat there? Pet Schlau. Wasn't there another cat? Wasn't there another cat called Schlau? I think there was, wasn't there? I think Otto's is a. I'm sorry, Klaus is, is, is this way, isn't it? Lives near the church, doesn't he? Oh. Father Thomas. Andreas! I heard you were back in Tassing. God bless you. God, God bless you, Father Thomas. It is good to see you again. Hopefully this visit will be less event eventful than your last. Oh, you've said it now! <laughs> Tassing has enough going on as it is. We have our bonfire for St. John's Eve tomorrow night. People get up to all sorts of mischief. St. John's, the feast and celebration of St. John the Baptist, beginning at sunset on the 23rd of June. Coincides with Midsummer's Day and the Summer Solstice. And then it's my job to hear their confessions in the days that follow. Not to mention the grumbling the peasants are making. That's just talk, brother. No need to scare our guests with such things. I'm sure if there is trouble, Master Mail will be the first to stick his nose in it. Why is it that the guy's got it going out for me? I don't know what it is, he's just jealous of something. Why are you always such an asshole? You have no appreciation for how privileged your life is. It's easy enough for you to come and go. You don't have to live with the consequences. After Ferenc was executed, Father Abbot made Matthew the new prior. Oh, interesting. Ferenc may have been annoying, but Matthew is even worse. Thanks for that. It would have been better for everyone if you had simply allowed Brother Piero to die. No, no, it wouldn't. After all, he only had a few years left anyway. Just stare at him. Nothing to say for yourself. Friends, friends, there's no need for such ire. I... Forgive me, Father Thomas. I let my passions get the better of me. Besides, it's not even why I came down here. I actually came to speak to you on the abbot's behalf, Andreas. Father Gernot would like to invite you to come to the library tomorrow morning if you'd be interested in purchasing some of our books. The abbot just had me run off and now he wants me back? I can't know the mind of the father abbot. I'll just do what he asks. 
The library is not quite ready yet, as it does not see much use. If you could come by tomorrow morning, Mother Illuminator will can show you what's, what's available. Mother Illuminator? Yes, since Mother Cecilia passed a few years ago. Well, I suppose Illuminator knows the library better than anyone. Yeah, alright, tell him to expect me. I'm sure he'll be overjoyed. And Andreas. I apologise for my harsh words before. It was rash. Brother Piero was a pious man and a skilled artist. We miss him. I appreciate you saying that. I miss him too. Excellent. I'm so glad you two were able to work things out. Or is he just saying that because of Father, Father Thomas is here? Yeah, maybe he is. Oh, Father Thomas, do you have a moment to speak inside the church? Yes, I think so. Why? A private matter. Oh, of course, of course. Until tomorrow. God bless you, Andreas. The Abbot's Invitation. I ran into Brother Guy outside of the town church. He extended an invitation from the abbot to buy books from the library. Mother Illuminator will be waiting for me there in the morning. This is where Klaus lives, isn't it? I think. Let me just have a quick check of the map. Yeah, I think this is right. Yeah, here he is. This is Klaus. Hasn't really changed much since here since I last saw him. Nobody else about. Oh yeah, he speaks in woodblocks, doesn't he? Andreas. I'm sorry, Klaus. I know it's been a long time. Seven years. Seven years and nothing from my friend Andreas. First Bert, then Marie just after Mag Magdalene, was, Magdalene was born. My wife always thought highly of you. I can't believe you didn't write back after I told you they had passed. Oh, so both his wife and son have died, have they? Is that, is that what he's saying? I didn't know what to say. Something! Anything! I'm sorry your son died, Klaus. I'm sorry your wife died, Klaus. How are you? Was the great speaker really at a loss for words? Too late for, for that now, though. That's his daughter, is it? Oh, hello! She likes you. Your business seems to have grown. What are you printing? The Twelve Articles. They were originally written by Swabian peasants who were demanding changes from their lords. Oh. Freedom from serfdom. Freedom to hunt and use the woods as God intended. Freedom from compulsory labour. Abolition of the inheritance tax, fair appraisal of rent, the return of property to common use and ownership. Bavaria and Swa isn't Swabia. Swa Swabia. A former duchy in the Southern Holy Roman Empire. It was reformed as the Swabian Circle in 1512. It borders Bavaria to the west, the Swiss Confederacy to the south, and Austria to the southeast. Bavaria isn't Swabia, but their complaints are just as valid for the peasants of Tassing. Ah, so this is Otto's cause. He's caught your ear already, hmm? The abbot has been squeezing the peasants for years. Now he's squeezing the townsfolk. We're pushing back. Their cause is righteous, Andreas. If you haven't seen the Gertners lately, you should visit them. And Otto had you print these? Yes. Why? Well, I didn't think he could read. He can't, but just about everyone else in town can. He speaks, I print. 
Just trying to do my part, I suppose. Oh, I see. That's what revolution is. Re them revolting against the church. I'm sorry. I'm still not in the mood for this late reunion. Come back for dinner tomorrow. She goes to the commons. Hear what Otto has to say. It's worth hearing. Of course. I will see you then. Be good while we're gone, Magdalene. Will you be good? I suppose so. Oh, already time to work. Klaus wasn't happy to see me. I probably should have written back to him when he contacted me about Marie and Bert. Nothing to be done about it now. He's been printing leaflets for Otto to promote the peasants' demands. He said that I should head to the commons to hear Otto giving a speech to the town. Well, that's a shame that both his wife and his son died. So, it's the town commons, I guess, then? Oh, here we go. So many people! There's a few familiar faces there. See the Gertners, and I can see um, there's Martin, there's Lucky. Oh, oh there's old uh, Atelia Kemperin as well. I guess she's still around. And there's uh, the, the Bakers, I remember them. Okay, but there's a few people I don't recognise as well. Everyone, listen. We all know why we're here. Nothing I'm going to say will be a surprise. Nothing I'm going to say hasn't already been spoken behind closed doors, whispered to your neighbours. Nothing I'm going to say is untruthful, so it's time we start to say it openly. Year after year, the Abbey has found new ways to tax the peasants. Piece by piece, the Abbey has taken away our right to use God's forest to support our families. Law after law gets heaped upon us, restrictions on how we can pay rent, limits on where we can move, who we can wed, and now the death tax, which once claimed only our best animal and garment, takes half our estate. No consideration for widows, no consideration for children. What about the town council, the Rathaus? Okay, let's have a look at Rathaus. A community hall where people meet, typically a council that governs day-to-day -day affairs under the authority of a lord. Okay. Surely that is a sign that the abbot wishes to share his power, to listen to our grievances? You have a good heart, Ulrich. You always want to see the best in people. But no. The council is a way for the abbots to divide us, to pit a favoured few against the many. This is not charity. No. Only greed and desperation drive Father Gernot. You'd think that if the abbot could, he'd steal a dead man's soul from heaven itself. And when we protested, what did Father Gernot do? He locked, the shire, he locked the shrine of St. Moritz. Oh, really, he's locked up now, is he? He won't allow the people of this town, the farmers of this land, to pray before the relic. Now, when we most need the intercession of our saint, the abbot has shut us out. Father Gernot's actions aren't just. They aren't Christian. We've endured this abuse for too long. It's time we let the abbot know we won't take it anymore. Now they all start cheering for him. Stop! This is foolish! Soldiers are already patrolling nearby towns! Oh god, they're all gonna get killed. If you push against the Abbey, you'll incur the Duke's wrath. You could get the town raised and everyone killed. Oh, it's Lenhard Muller the, the, from the mills, isn't he? Hannah's right. The Duke is a powerful force in Bavaria. You're playing a dangerous game, Otto. You lot are no match for trained soldiers. If you don't relent, you'll be ground into dust like the, Swa the Swabian peasants. I can always grind you up instead, Lenhard. Yeah, you don't like Lenhard either. Don't be shy. Speak up, if you have cause. We won't be overrun. The peasants of Salzburg were able to take the city and have their cause, have their cause heard. 
If the people can get the Archbishop of Salzburg to listen to them, then we can do the same with the abbot. Master Andreas, do you think my family in Salzburg is alright? Don't worry. The civilian losses were minimal. They're probably fine. Oh no. Maybe we should go to Salzburg after this. Enough is enough. We can't stand by while the abbot continues tre treating us poorly. People all over Swabia are taking back their God-given rights. Why shouldn't we do the same? Well, Martin's actually turned, out on, turned on the good side for once, has he? Well spoken, Martin. Everyone ought to consider what he said. Martin has proved dependable these last few years. But if the words of men can't persuade you, perhaps a sign from a greater power will. The abbot may have locked us out of our saint's shrine, but God has shown me that he's with us. That's weird. I think that's all I should say for now. Thank you all for coming. Did alright there? Good day, Andreas. Clara, it's been too long. It's lovely to see you again. Hello, Andreas. I'm surprised to see you after your long absence from Tassing. At this rate, we thought we'd never see you again. I was gone too long. I'm sorry for not sending word of my arrival. You certainly did pick an odd time to visit. We're in the middle of a strange season. Ah, you found the Gertners. Your speech was very rousing, Otto. I swear they get better each time. I hope the Duke doesn't catch word of this, Otto. The town could suffer for it. We're past the point of caring, Mailer. If you were in our position, you'd understand that. You're right. It's not my place to judge. I'm just concerned. It's appreciated, but we know the risks. Alright, conv convince Otto to talk about his sign from God, so understood why many people hate the abbot, was surprised Lorenz wasn't killed sooner, suggested someone do something about unjust laws, stood your ground with Ma when Matthew approached the grave, so he didn't care if Matthew told the abbot about the dig. Okay, so I guess I've uh, got Otto on my side then. Otto, did you really see a sign from God? Is that true? It is, Andreas. I swear. Come talk to me later. I'll tell you what I can, alright? Anyway, Andreas, you and yours should come by the house for supper. We'd be delighted to have you. Sound good to you, Casper? Yes, Master Andreas. I'm starving. Our table's a little sparse lately, but we'll be sure to feed you well. Thank you. We'll see you there. Oh, already going there to eat. Go to the Gertner's for supper, okay? Otto's speech was attended by almost everyone in Tassin. He spoke of the many problems both the townsfolk and peasants have with the abbot's re regulations. Most people agreed with him, but Lenhard Muller and Hannah Berger Berger Bergerin were worried about the Duke's intervention. He also hinted at receiving a sign of God's favour that he's planning to reveal on St. John's Day. Oh, there's this as well. I ran into Clara and Eva in the commons. Clara invites us to spend time with the family over supper. I shall head to the farm when I'm ready. Let's see if there's anyone else about. I guess Andreas is still around, is he? Andreas, you're back in Tassing. Just for a few days, I wanted to pay my respects to Brother Piero. Oh yes, Brother Piero. Well, talent with colour. I'm sorry, Andreas. He was a sweet old man. I talk to him sometimes on my breaks up at the Abbey. I'm surprised Prior Ferenc didn't give you an earful. Well, he did before the uh, unpleasantness. I'm sure you know if, shook, if it shook things up at the Abbey for a while. I'd imagine. Awful business that was. Anyway. Matthew's Prior now. Still strict, but a bit quieter about it. Matthew has always struck me as quite, as quite pious. True. 
You wouldn't think piety could be uncommon in Abbey, but with Father Gernot... Oh? Are you with the peasants, Endris? Well, of course. Gernot has been running them into the ground. On top of that, we can't even use the forest anymore. Any of us used to be able to go fishing in there. Not anymore. I hope things don't get bloody. Bloody? No one wants that, Andreas. But we're not going to get anywhere by keeping quiet. You have a good advocate in Otto. He's a good man and he speaks the truth. The whole town knows it. Even Lenhard, though he, wants, though he wouldn't admit it. Say, Andreas, how has the married life been treating you? After you left here and returned to Nuremberg, I take it you were married? I was. Sabine, she was waiting for me. Hope the married life has treated you well. I still have not found anyone. I fear it's never going to happen. Yeah, I get the impression that Andreas isn't really that happy in his marriage. Honestly, don't even bother. Marriage is not worth it. It may fit some, but it's been nothing but miserable for me. Oh, it can't be that bad. Having a companion on the path of life, caring for your family. The laughter of your wife and kids. Let you take comfort in your craft. In all these years, I never would have guessed. The people in Tassing look happy together. Well, sometimes. Hmm, occasionally. Rarely, if I really think about it. They often bicker with each other, more so as time passes. The Gertners, the Mullers, the Albans, the Bowers. Do the moments of love ever overtake those of irritation, irritation and bitterness? Marriage isn't really about love, but living a good and proper Christian life. If you can find love, great, but if not, that's still good enough. I'd hope it's best than good enough in the eyes of God. Maybe you're right, maybe I should focus on my craft. I've grown quite skilled over the years, but there's more to learn. Thank you. A pleasure. Until later, Andrus. Until then. Okay, let's head to the Gertners then. Maybe I'll spout here first before I go in. Nope, doesn't look like it. More people about then, let's talk to Sauce Clara. Hello again, Andreas. We're about to sit down to supper. Care to join? It would be my pleasure. Actually, no, maybe it's better for me to walk around a bit more, see if there's anything else that I can work out, see if there's anything I can find out about. Yeah, that's one thing actually. Let me see if I can see what's happened to Atilia, see if she's alright. Uh, let's see, is it this way? Yeah, it's this way, isn't it? Guess so this Atilia's still here, so she wasn't kicked out or something, I suppose. Yeah, there she is. Andreas? Hmm, guess not. Oh well. Guess I'll find out more about her later or something. Let's just quickly chat and see if some of these other people. So there's Brigitte. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Brigitte. How are you? As well as anyone can be in Tassing right now. It looks like, it looks like things are going well for you. Martin returned, after all. Yes. The winter without him was excruciating. I lost little I lost little Wolf, and Cat was worried that she'd lose the farm after France died. Oh god, she lost her child. Oh, that's awful that. There's really a lot of that in this game, isn't there? Lots of parents losing their children. But then Martin returned, and he's provided and he's provided well for us ever since. Despite the tightening restrictions, we've gotten by. I'm thankful. I'm sorry to hear about Wolf. Thank you, it's... I try not to think about it. Yes, yeah, just nod regretfully. Cat wants to talk about him all the time, you know. 
any night there's clear skies, she looks up and asks, so I ever wonder how, he's up, how he is up there. That must be excruciating. <laughs> yes, it is. She's on the bush, so I'm about to burst into tears. I'm sorry, Andreas. I can't talk about this anymore. Was that a good idea? Why did she think she wants to talk about her dead son? Are you trying to hurt her? Does it feel good to you hurting the wounded? No, I was trying to be kind. Does she seem like she's been gifted with a kindness? No. You wouldn't want someone to talk about talk to you about it. That's why you don't mention it. I can't take this anymore. You can. We say these things even though the reminding inflicts immense pain. We say these things because it's the only way through. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. And say that. Will it make any difference? I'm sorry I brought him up, Brigitte. You didn't know. It's alright. It's been good to see you again, but I could be I should be going. Until later. Until then. I'm not sure what that was about. Was that one of the people he even, he even thinks about all the time? And there's Martin. Andreas Mailer. Good to see you again after all these years. I'm surprised you'd say that. Your parting words to me back then were hardly kind. Were they? It's been so long, I don't remember. It was pretty rude. Well, sorry for being such an arsehole back then. It seems like you've learned a lot since then. Seven years is a long time for a young man, especially one going through what I was. What happened to you anyway? Oh, right. You know I stole some of the Baron's things? I didn't make it far with them. I tried to sell them in, Wal in Walgau and I got robbed. Serves me right, I guess. Luckily, they didn't find the coins I was carrying. The money carried me around Bavaria for another month and a half. Then I started stealing. I grew bigger and more confident over time and became a highwayman. <laughs> highwayman? You're lucky you didn't get killed. And that's what made me quit in the end. I had a partner for the last year of my adventures. We tried to rob some Italians. We thought they were merchants travelling under the ba under banner of St. George. St. George, a second century praetorian guard and patron saint of England. He's most well known for his legendary victory against a dragon. Yep, heard that story before. They were not. They were soldiers guarding the property of an Italian bank. My partner didn't survive the encounter. I was wounded and alone in the wilderness. I thought of my mother, my, my father, my mother and Brigitte. I realised I couldn't remember Wolf's face anymore. I had to come back and take up the responsibilities I had left behind. It's good you did, for everyone's sake. You may be right. Mum and Brigitte couldn't run the farm after Dad died. Maybe it's for the best that he wasn't here when I got back. Eh, it's all in the past now. Just need to look forward. That's a good attitude. I'll talk to you later, Martin. Until then. Oh, so his, his father's dead as well then, is he? He was a bit he was a bit of an arsehole, to be honest, wasn't he? Uh, right, let's, let's go to the Gertners then. They've had enough wandering around for now. Okay, let's, let's eat. It's truly a blessing to have everyone back together again, if only briefly. Keep an eye on that boy of yours, Andreas. See that he minds how much he takes. Young boys eat too goddamn much. Peter, stop that. Andreas is our guest. Why don't you lead us in grace? Fine. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these, these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. We pray again for our beloved Christine, gone now these many years. Please help me protect my family in these difficult times. Through Christ, our Lord, Amen. 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 Master Andreas, why are we the only ones with bread? 
Quiet, Casper. Andreas, it's so good to have you at our table again. And with another guest, is this young man your assistant? Casper, yes, he's my apprentice. Ah, that would explain why I saw him writing in that little journal. I remember you did the same thing when you lived here. What we got? It's got cheese, rye bread and fresh pottage. Okay, let's have the, some of the bread. Do you still draw on your journal, Andreas? Oh, sometimes when the mood strikes. Wouldn't that be nice, George? If only we had to work when the whim took us. And we toil all day, and that despicable abbot is starving us all while he sips on his sacramental fucking wine. Lay off him, Dad. He's only just got here. How have the fates been treating you these last few years? Guess Ursula's ill. Ugh. The Lord is testing us with another hard season, I'm afraid. That's one, that's one way to say it. Be miserable as shit all around. <coughs> Maybe you should be resting, Grandpa. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna do it sitting up on my own goddamn table. The whole family's been ill, Andreas. Peter, his father, and Ursula with an with a with an ague. Is that it? And me? Well. Clara lost a child in childbirth and childbed a year ago now. Oh dear. Tragedy. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Andreas. It was some time ago, but... Well, such things linger. It was monstrous. Monstrous! Don't think about it. Just keep the conversation going. Yeah, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. <laughs> it's just going to keep going like this, isn't it? Alright, you're already thinking about it. Let's do that. Please leave me alone. Just for a while. Alright, just for a while. I don't actually recognise her. What's that all about? Um, sure, the child is with the Lord now. The Lord doesn't look, seem to look our way any longer. That's why it's time for us to take matters into our own hands. Please, can we not talk about this now? And we have fresh pottage. George here was married while you were away, Andreas. Really? To whom? To me, Andreas. Why else do you think I'm here? Of course, you two make a good match. George's been good to me. There aren't many other options in Tassing anyway. It's been a couple springs, but I'm still not used to being married. Congratulations, George. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Andreas. It's been our one blessing in a dark season. With children soon to come, I hope. What? Don't get it. <laughs> Do you? Uh. Oh, forget it, Ursula. What have you been up to, Andreas? Yeah, what should I say? What should I say? My life seems so far from theirs now. Don't leave them waiting. I can't think of anything! Nothing but my miserable little problems. I think you're rude if you don't say something. Uh, let's have a look. Um, so let's go with this one, yeah. Well, I've been so busy with Casper's apprenticeship, I never have any time to myself. Better not have any children then. I'll do my best to be helpful. Uh, sir, maybe you should excuse yourself and rest. You're sick. But Mum, I'm still hungry. Here, Ursula, you can have mine. It's not fair that nobody else gets any bread besides Master Andreas and me. Stop! Ursula, give it back to him. I'm not going to have people in this town saying we can't feed our goddamn guests. Besides, we all have work to get back to, don't we? Good. 
Time to get back to it, Andreas. We'll see you and your boy later. My apologies, Peter. We don't mean to overstay our welcome. It's all right, Andreas. He's just in a bad mood. It was lovely to see you again. Yes, thank you for coming, Andreas. Will you be staying for St. John's Eve? I think so. Good. Hopefully we'll see you later. Until then. Okay, time to sleep then. Okay, well, I guess I'll head back to the inn. Wonder if anything will happen while I'm on my way back. Check the journal. The curtains have fallen on hard times. The supper was meagre and the conversation was dire. Peter is angrier than ever about the abbot's rule over Tassig. An unhappy ending to our first day here. It's time for us to retire for the evening. Oh, I thought something might happen. Oh, it's you, isn't it? The sin of Saul! The sin of Saul! Saul, the first monarch of Israel. Why is this music? <laughs> I've heard this before. According to the Old Testament, Saul was divinely rejected from the king's ship after disobeying the prophet Samuel's instructions. Master, did you hear that? It sounds like someone crying out. I think it's Sister Am Am Amelie. She's a mystic. She may be having one of her visions. Sister Amelie? Are you alright? The Philistines, this is the hand of God! Complain, complain! Monastic hour corresponding to 8pm. While the little hours of prayer, the monks and nuns retire to their dormitory shortly afterwards. Sister, is something happening at Compline? It's Compline right now! No! Sister? Sister Amelie? Guess that's the end of that. You're the artist, Andreas. Are you alright, sister? I'm tired. Was I talking? You were having a vision. You mentioned the sin of Saul, the Philistines, and Complain. Oh, I wish Father Thomas were here. Would you like Casper to go get him? If he could, yes. His house is just around the corner. Casper, run and get Father Thomas. Yes, Master Andreas. Your son? My apprentice, but I think of him like a son. He seems eager to please you. He is quite enthusiastic, yes. I have little knowledge of the workings of, must of masters and apprentices. My world is one of spirit, decoupled from the, the march of life and death. I see and hear your world turning from this little window, but they are mercifully small glimpses. You chose a difficult life. The life is not difficult, but the choice was. My life belongs to God, and its trials are mine to endure in this cell. She's been here for years, hasn't she? Your world is the world of normal, of normal lives and normal thoughts. It can be difficult to hear the divine, much less make sense of it. I have no will to be part of that world. I strive to have no will at all, but to subordinate, to subordinate myself to the will of God. When my will is, is God's will, God's great, God graces me with visions, confusing though they may be. Certainly if God is giving you visions, he wants you to understand them. Understanding is a trial, Andreas. Perhaps what he wants from me is to strive. I'm striving to understand a different, deeper mystery. It is not my place to question God's will, but to contemplate the revela It is not my place to question his will, but to contemplate the revelations I receive with the help of Father Thomas. Sister, what is that hole in the ground? My grave. I what? I dug it before Father Thomas read me my funeral rites, before I was enclosed here. I dig a little more in it each day. Most people find it shocking, but this is my devotion, my vocation. Dedicating yourself to digging a grave, okay? 
Once someone finds their calling, they must answer it fully. I don't think it's that simple. I find that God's calling is simple and singular. It is the rest of the world that is complicated. Is your calling in question, Andreas? Is your life? I said both, I think. I've lost my love. My love for art, love for family, love for anything. The last seven years have been hard. It was all too much for me. Don't lose hope, Andreas. The human heart is no small thing. It can hold so much. Augustine? Andreas, thank you for sending Casper. It seemed prudent. Are you alright, Sister Amelie? Yes, Father. I have had another vision. Andreas said I spoke of the sins of Saul, Philistines and Compline. What do you think it means, Father? Andreas? Casper? Could you excuse us? We appreciate your help, but I must tend to her now in the church. Of course, Father. Good evening. God bless you both. Master Andreas, I'm confused. What did that all mean? I'm not sure, but the last time I heard Sister Amelie have a vision, it was just before the Baron was murdered. What? Do you think... Could Sister Amelie be receiving warnings? It is easy to think that, especially after the fact, but I was only present for one murder and one other vision. But what if there's another murder? I'm wondering who it could be. Could it be, uh, could it be Father Gernot, perhaps, or something like that? If that happens, I may revise my opinion. Come, Casper. Let's retire for the evening. That's a good point there. I was thinking maybe there will be another murder. I'm thinking, could, could it really be Father Gernot is the, the next, the next uh, victim, I'm wondering. But I think I'll probably save that for next time. Yes, so... Uh, yeah, really on a, starting off on a really sour note here, aren't we? Like, everyone seems to be you know, quite unhappy with their lives in Tassing at the moment. Even Andreas seems to you know, be really unhappy with his life, you know, being an artist. It definitely seems like it's not really what he thought it would be. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe when we wake up in the morning, someone else is going to be dead and I have to solve another mystery. Again, I'm, my guess is it might be end up being Father Gernot, but uh, maybe it could be someone I've not met before. But I suppose that's something we'll look forward to next time. And if you like this video, then please, please give it a like if not already subscribe. It really does help me ask my channel known. If you want to see more content like this, like more of Pentiment, or if you have any suggestions what other games you should play in the future, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, folks, bye.